Hello everyone, this is VeloDreamer. Today I'll talk about how I made this thing. A beacon, or as I like to call it, a fin. Well, beacon is probably the better term. It has cameras mounted on it. Here's one camera and here's the other. As well as a flashing light and a headlight. I also added mirrors. Why is it necessary? If you've ever used a velomobile, you've probably had someone, maybe the police or a concerned citizen, tell you that you're not visible enough on the road and that you need to attach a flag. I used to ride with a large flag for quite a while. I attached a bright orange 12-volt beacon to it, the kind usually used on tractors. I cut the flag strips out of reflective fabric from old clothing, which greatly increased my visibility on the road. However, when I measured my energy consumption with and without the flag, I found that I was losing about 20 watts. So I removed the flag and rode without it for a while, until I was stopped by the police. They once again told me I needed a flag and mentioned that people had been complaining that I was not visible enough on the road. I had to put the flag back on. I even added a bright orange cloth to it. But this encounter with the police convinced me that it was time to solve the visibility issue in a more elegant way. The idea is to replace these parts. Remove the camera and this piece here, and also get rid of this protruding camera, the headlight, and the rear flashing light. All of those will be relocated onto this new structure, which will be mounted on top, allowing me to do away with the flag altogether. I recently got a 3D printer. It's an outdated model with several issues, but it works overall. Since I already had a 3D model of my Velomobile, I was able to design the beacon body to fit this specific Velomobile perfectly. I also modeled the mounts for the cameras, the headlight, and the rear flashing light based on the dimensions of the parts I already had. I don't have much experience in 3D printing, so I got lucky and managed to produce such a large part on my second attempt. The first time, a bolt on the pulley of one of the printer's motors came loose, ruining the entire piece. While fixing the issue and testing the printer with other parts, I realized I didn't have enough red filament. To be safe, I welded some white filament onto the end of the red spool. The result was this nice color transition, which looks like it's part of the design. Here's my printed part. I ran out of red filament toward the end, but since I anticipated that might happen, I had welded white filament to the end of the spool, resulting in this cool effect that almost looks intentional. Now I'll be installing this part onto the Velomobile. It weighs 420 grams, which is quite a bit, but it's a large part. Maybe I could have optimized it by reducing the infill density inside this large circular section. I accidentally drilled a hole here while making space for LED strips that I wanted to place inside and have already placed, in fact. I've connected everything now, though I haven't inserted the screws or fully secured the cameras yet, so I can still adjust their position and level the horizon. Let's set up the lighting. If I position it like this, it'll definitely blind me. And positioned like this, it'll blind oncoming traffic. But, well, it's not great. It ends up shining on the nose of the Velomobile. Let's check how much glare it creates. 
Here's the level when I'm standing upright. Now squatting. And here, crouching completely, it starts to glare a lot. But this position is really low, so maybe it's not that bad. It's clearly weaker in this area. Well, we'll see how it works in practice. Here's how the Velomobile looks with the beacon. I think it looks pretty good. The top headlight is shining. The rear flashing light is blinking and the cameras are working. The new fin and red mirrors, which by the way were the test parts I used to calibrate the 3D printer, definitely added some style to my Velomobile. But did they achieve anything beyond just aesthetics? The headlight on top of the beacon definitely improves visibility from the front, as does the bright orange rear flashing light. The cameras now have an excellent viewing position and the rear camera is well protected from rain, staying almost dry even in heavy downpours. Unfortunately, fogging of the cameras remains an issue, despite the fact that they heat up noticeably during operation. The rear camera is almost always much cleaner than the front one and its image quality is better. Therefore, I decided to use it not only for recording but also as a rear view camera. Overall, daytime riding hasn't changed much, but now I like the Velomobile's shadow silhouette even more. I haven't yet conducted energy efficiency tests, so I can't say for sure how much the drag has decreased after removing the flag, protruding cameras and one of the headlights, as well as making the mirrors more aerodynamic. However, I'm sure these changes have improved efficiency. The most interesting part is riding at night. Unfortunately, things didn't go as well as I'd hoped at night. The top headlight still shines on the nose of the Velomobile. Its light also reflects off the cabin roof and seeps inside. On the one hand, this is a plus because it's not completely dark inside. But on the downside, it reduces contrast and visibility during night rides, especially in fog or rain. Here's what the road looks like with the top headlight on uh, and here's how it looks with it off. Another issue is that the top headlight reflects in the mirrors, creating the illusion that there's a vehicle behind me. This can be quite distracting. Currently, I have a separate switch for the powerful front headlight. The top headlight and two weaker front lights are kind of single toggle switch along with the rear flashing light and the red LED strip. It might make sense to add a separate switch for the top headlight so I can turn it off at night. Uh, the headlights on the nose should be sufficient for nighttime riding. I also recorded a side view video to show how the Velomobile looks on the road at night. Uh, in general, installing this beacon has improved my visibility on the road and increased safety when riding among cars, even in bad weather. Only after installing the beacon did I feel confident enough to ride into Kilkenny, a nearby city. The road to Kilkenny has several narrow sections where cars can rarely overtake me, meaning they often have to trail behind me. Now, I anticipate some questions. 
Actually, I've already received a few. Can I make another beacon like this for other Velo mobiles, for example, for the DF model or, or any other mass produced model? Unfortunately, for now, the answer is no. Uh, to do it properly, I would need a 3D model of the Velomobile to ensure the base of the beacon perfectly fits the curvature of that specific Velomobile. I currently don't have access to ready-made Velomobiles from other manufacturers. However, if someone provides me with a, uh, a 3D model, not necessarily of the entire Velomobile, just of this part where the beacon attaches, I could adapt my model to match the contour of that specific Velomobile. Well, that's it for now. Wishing you all a happy new year.